Hi everybody, this is Katie Vandermeer. Um, I'm the teacher for CIS 132 Linux 1, but unfortunately I'm not able to be there the first day. I had surgery yesterday, August 30th, in the future because I'm doing this on August 21st, but my, I have, um, I've been kind of sick all summer. Nothing major, but I had a surgery on the well, I hope to have a surgery on August 30th. Uh, that will put me out of commission for about a week. So I'll be missing my first week of classes. But I'll be there next week to meet you all in person. But I wanted you to get started on the course. And I wanted to go through some of the things that you would need to know uh, or that I would tell you if I were there. So I know somebody's there with you today. And he's helping you get logged in and showing you a little bit about the course, hopefully, or about Blackboard or the college or, or what have you. And probably can answer a few questions for you, but I wanted to go through some of the things that I would do. So get into Blackboard if you're not already. First of all, even though we are a face-to-face -face course, I use Blackboard quite extensively um, for our course as well. So I use announcements. Make sure that you're checking your announcements in your email, um, you know, a couple times a week so that you can keep up with the course and pay attention to anything that I post. It's important for you to know. Um, under the professor link, you'll find my contact information. Um, one thing that I do advise you to follow if you're on Facebook is my Facebook page. Um, I do post a lot of information about uh, the college and the, the department itself, um, different things going on. Uh, do, let's see, important um, internships, I want to find an internship, um, funny things, um, things that are going on in the community related to IT, just a lot of different things with the uh, IT uh, field and specifically our department as well. So if you don't follow me yet, go ahead and I would ask you to follow my Facebook page, um, KDGRCC, Facebook.com. So go ahead and go out there sometime soon and follow that. Um, I also have a website that I, that I update and maintain, KDVandermeer.com. Um, here's my cell phone if you want to text or call me, but the best way to get a hold of me is email kvandermeer at grcc.edu. I check my phone. It's always next to me. Ta-da! And I check my email quite a bit, so I can, uh, if it's important, I'll respond to you right away, but uh, generally I like to wait down, wait to sit down um, in front of my computer if uh, you have a problem with a, a homework assignment or something that you want me to check out but I'll get back with you very quickly. Um, our department website site is important, uh, grcc.edu, and then you can just type CIS. There's a lot of great stuff out there. Um, I have a YouTube page, um, office hours. There's a link to my office hours out here on the professor page and where my office is. I'm in 212 at the APC, which is just out in the main hall. Uh, and then a little bit about my teaching style and about me personally. So I know some of you, I, I checked the class list, I know um, some of my former programming students, like, you know, Carrie and Dan uh, should be sitting in there in class, but I don't know a lot of you. I haven't met you or you've only been a student in my online courses. So I look forward to meeting everybody in person next week. Um, and then reading a little bit about you when we do our first um, we have a discussion board that you have to do that kind of introduces yourself. So this is my introduction to you. Um, I've been teaching for 18 years here at the department. I am the, um, the full-time professor for the networking curriculum. So code 147 is networking curriculum, which is probably why you're taking this Linux course. Uh, I teach a lot of different classes like Linux and Network Plus, and I'm doing Cisco courses again this or for the first time this year. Uh, and I also do programming classes because I really like programming, even though it's way different than networking. 
but I'll uh, I'll probably meet you in several of my courses if you are in the code uh, 147, the networking curriculum, um, and also I'm also the primary advisor for that particular uh, curriculum. So if you need help figuring out what classes to take, substitutions, things like that, I can help you with that. So a little bit about me, you can read read there. It's a lot about me because I like to type and write and talk. Um, my weekly schedule, I'm on campus on Wednesdays and Fridays. And then I'll probably be on another day. But office hours will probably be on Wednesdays and Fridays. So you can check my website or uh, ask me in class. We have lab time built into our course schedule. So usually I don't need to meet with somebody outside of our class for help on their homework, we can um, do that in class. But um, I am working from uh, off campus the other days, doing online classes and then prep her for our face-to-face -face courses. So you can generally get a hold of me, you know, Monday through Friday, normal business hours. Um, my weekly schedule, I have some links, I have just a all the links there and then uh, if you need to catch me on campus this is my schedule so I don't have it all populated yet but I have a few things out there okay your schedule calendar of due dates um, our due dates are all on Wednesday nights at 11:59. so the assignments are all set up um, are all set up to be due on Wednesday night, 11.59. They don't disappear if you miss that deadline. So you can still turn it in, but you'll be marked late. Typically, if it's if it's very late, if it's just a day or so, I typically am pretty flexible on that. But if you're very late, I'll take off points. But the assignment doesn't go away, so still submit things. We don't have due dates every week in this course because we only cover one, two, three, four, five, six, seven chapters. Uh, so we have due dates every other week. Our, uh, we'll talk about our textbooks in a minute, but we don't cover, we cover them in different orders. So make sure you check our, our calendar of due dates because it tells you what we're working on. So today you're doing the getting to know you in the course tour. That's due September 7th at 11.59. Next week when we meet, we'll do Unit 1 and we'll do Unit 2. Uh, I don't know how, but we'll fit it all in there. And those things will be due September 14th. And then we have Unit 3 due September 28th. Um, you'll notice we have two weeks for Unit 3, two weeks for Unit 4, two weeks for Unit 5. So typically, you know, once we get into the heavier chapters, we have time to do um, we have time to do lectures and interactive. Well, I like to do interactive lectures, so you're doing things, not just listening. And then we have days, um, which I call discovery days, that you do your lab assignments, uh, typically independently, um, where I'm there helping you, and you can also work with other students if you need. So we don't, we don't talk every day, or we don't. Um, I don't lecture every day that we meet. You have time to do lab um, in class as well. But you'll want to um, keep a, a close look on a close eye on the calendar of due dates right here again. You click here because it tells you what we're doing that day and then also when things are due. So make sure you know that. Um, point breakdowns. I added, it's in a couple different places, but I added it here. Um, this is our, you, you know, you'll notice that different units, once we get to look at the assignments, we have different units, and different units have exams um, and quizzes, labs, and some discussion boards. And this is the breakdown of all of our points. So we have 1,476 points total points in the course, uh, the majority of our points come from lab work. So those are really easy A's because you do it or you don't. Um, you want to make sure you don't miss a lab because they're 100, about 100 points a piece. 
Um, a lot of points come from quizzes. 24% of the class comes from quizzes. 17% of their, their grade will come from your midterm and final. And then 11% from Transcender. I have a couple discussion boards in there, but I'm not a big fan of them, so we don't use them very much. You can see the, the breakdown of where your points and your grade will come from this class. The lab work is by far the most important part of your grade. Keep that in mind. There's a due date. Um, assignments. This is where we, um, this is where you'll go to see the assignments that you'll do, that you need to do. Um, in the, uh, today you're going to go through Unit 0 and um, I'll let uh, your substitute tell, talk to you about that. Uh, it's pretty basic, but um, there's graded assignments in there. Calendar of due date says that Unit 0 is due September um, 7th at 1159. We're not going to have time in class next week to do that. Uh, so do that today. Do that sometime before you come to class next week. And then next week we're going to cover chapters for Unit 1 and Unit 2, which are chapters 1 and 2. And we'll start our installation. That'll kind of go into um, Chapter 3 as well. Um, so how the most of the assignments are laid out. Now, each unit will have its own folder. Uh, like Chapter 1, I give you an introduction of it. I give you the slide deck, which is the PowerPoint. We have quizzes, we have labs, sometimes we have discussion boards. Uh, there's only two, so don't don't go like, oh, I see discussion boards. But there's some use to them, but we're meeting face-to-face, -face, so we don't have that many of them anyway, or don't need that many. Um, and then some of them have transcender assignments. So when we go through um, these quizzes and these assignments, um, when we assign them next week, we'll take a look at how you submit them. So I don't want to take the time in this video to do that. Um, but your quizzes, though, I, I will mention real quick on that. Uh, when you go into a quiz, because there are a couple quizzes um, in Unit 0 that you're going to do today, when you click on the quiz and it opens up, it'll tell you what the due date is. You can begin it. It will... Um, sorry, Ready to know on it, make sure you guys are doing unit zero the first day. But the quizzes, when you go in there, you can go in and um, answer the questions, save your answers, go through, you know, some of them. Um, and then when you're completely finished, you hit save and submit, and that grades. But if you're not finished with everything and you want to go back and um, take some more time later, you can close out of the test. Just leave the, make sure your answers are saved and then leave it. And then when you go back in, say three days later, um, the questions that you already started will be saved. So you, you can go in and multiple time. I don't know. No, don't mark. I'm just quickly looking at these, so don't um, don't take true or false or A, B, C, or D as the answers. But um, you can go back in very multiple times to answer um, questions. Just make sure you hit save. Okay? You can only save and submit it one time, though. So that's how the quizzes work. And same is true for the unit. Um, unit zero quiz. If you start a quiz and then have to leave or um, you're, you don't have time to finish it, then you can always go back. And just make sure you save it. Um, some of the assignments will have transcender assignments. So let's look into chapter two because I think there's one in there. Now, Transcender Assignments are a piece of software that we're going to, um, you have to purchase for the course. We'll talk about it in a minute. But um, these are set up where they're essentially credit, no credit as well. Uh, next week when we meet, 
we'll log into Transcender and do our first assignment together so you can see how it works, how to, how to get the best use of, out of it. But those um, are in some of the units too, not every single unit. So we have quizzes, Transcender, and then labs are the typical things that we'll have with each of our units, which is a lot of work, um, but we have a lot of time. So remember, it'll be busy at, be at the beginning, um, especially the first day that we actually meet and do chapters one and two. Um, but what I would suggest is that chapter, that when you're in class, use your in-class time to do the labs because we're going to build our operating systems in class um, and then your homework time at, at home when you're doing stuff, do the quizzes at home because all you need to do, uh, all you need for the quizzes is the textbook um, or notes or things like that. But the labs you are doing hands-on so you need your, your time in class. Transcender assignments you should do at home too because you want to spend some time with the product. We'll take a look at it today, but it's something that you want to um, really become familiar with and you want to do in a quiet environment so that you can prepare for the certification. Okay, so that's where all of our assignments are. I have the entire class um, finished. We went to a new textbook last year. We're going to keep it this year. Um, I made some changes over the summer that I think are uh, really good. So I'm just going to go ahead and leave everything out there for you. Uh, it, it, you can work ahead if you want. The labs are probably hard, a little hard to work ahead on um, because we only have so much time in class a week. So um, I'll leave them all out there for you. Uh, here's a link to the discussion board. Um, there's a couple, you know, unit zeros, introductions. Um, that's what you're going to do today. So, so you guys can introduce yourselves in class. Um, if uh, the person there has you do that, probably a good idea to get to know each other. Um, if you haven't, maybe pause and take a minute to introduce yourselves or um, do it after this video. Uh, and then I want to know who you are, and um, I want you to go ahead and click in here and tell me about yourself so that I can learn a little bit about you as well. Now that link is also through, um, it's also through the unit zero, so in here we have things like the discussion board that links you right back to uh, this area here. It's one in the same. Um, we have a unit one discussion board that we'll do next week. And then I also down here have an open forum. Uh, information that you find, um, information that you find that you want to share with um, the class or questions that you might have, you can post in here. I don't typically check that very often, so if, ur if it's urgent, then send me an email, but if you have anything you want to share um, with the class, that's a good place to put it in that open forum. Okay, assignments, discussion, grades. This is where you can keep track of your grade. Now you notice that I started that quiz one, but I didn't finish it, so you see it says that in progress. Um, but all of the grades are out here, and it'll show all 1,476 points that we have. And currently, I have an E. And I have an E because I haven't done anything yet. So you all start with an E. I'm sorry, that's how it is. But as soon as you turn in a, a lot of things, then your grade will go up. Um, don't let that E scare you. It's just that you haven't done anything yet. When you turn in the first assignment, you know, you might get 100%, 20 out of 20. That's great. You've got 20 points. This E is going up a little bit. But um, that's your cumulative grade. If you don't like that, some people, it freaks them out, so I can hide it for you. But um, here, keep track of, of what your grades are. There's a, in the unit zero, 
when you do the course tour with the tour which is in here there is a um, a picture of the icons in Blackboard, the grading icons, and it tells you what they mean. An exclamation mark means that it's not graded, but you turned it in. So that's important. Um, this symbol here, in progress. So it means that you started it, but you didn't submit it. Or if you open up an assignment, it'll have like a time clock or a hourglass, a sand hour, a sand glass and um, you need to submit it in order for me to grade it. So make sure you're checking your grades very often. Make sure you know, um, you know what you've turned in. The due date for all of the assignments are listed here as well as in the calendar of due dates. So no excuses, you know, when things are done. Um, our syllabus and uh, grading rubrics are listed here. So here, um, um, maybe the substitute who's there, the person who's there can pause and talk for a minute about the general things that are in a syllabus. Um, important thing, you know, it tells you what the course is, what we're going to learn, um, what we're going to learn in this course. Just writing notes about what I want to let that person know. Uh, attendance policies, college policies. Um, the biggest thing here I want to point out for me is any students with disabilities who have to be registered with disability, disability support services. So go register if you're not already and then if you are, you need to let me know what accommodations I need to make for you to help you succeed. So please um, give me a call and let me know after you um, register with Disability Support Services. Um, one of the other important college policies is email. When we communicate, we have to communicate via your student email account. You can't use, you're not supposed to use like your Gmail account or anything like that. Just it helps keep better records. Um, we send announcements that go to your student email account. Make sure you're using your student email account. And inside of Blackboard, um, can't, I'm in a different preview right here, so I can't see it. But in Blackboard, at the top, it says student email or email or um, student Gmail, something like that. That's where you can check your student email. So make sure you do that. It's, um, it's your same username and password as Blackboard. Here's another list of the grade breakdown, and then here are the grading rubrics. A grading rubric, um, here's a video by Professor Rosma that explains it, but all it is is it tells you where your points are coming from. So if you've got between a 60 and 79, it's satisfactory, so it's lacking in two or more of these categories. Those are the rubrics. Okay, required materials. These are this is important because um, you want to all know what you have to buy. First of all, you need the textbook. It's the CompTIA Linux Plus, see, or even better yet, I have it right here. CompTIA Linux Plus Guide to Linux Certification. This book we use for both Linux One and Linux Two. So if you're taking Linux 2, and you probably will have to, depending on uh, if you're if you're in the Net Plus curriculum, you need to, the network. I'm sorry, the network administration curriculum. You need to take Linux 1 and Linux 2. So save this textbook. We're going to use it um, for the rest of this year. It'll be in Linux 1. It'll be in Linux 2 for the 2016-2017 academic year. Things in um, IT change a lot, so I can't guarantee you what it'll be like in fall of 2017. It's a whole year away. So if you take Linux 2, um, and you'll probably need to, I would recommend that you take it in the winter. So courses that start after the semester, uh, because we will guarantee that you're using the same book. So you won't have to buy another book. So. If you 
um, can buy it uh, used, it's cheaper. Buy it online, it's cheaper, or rent it, cheaper, obviously. But um, we do need the textbook. It has all of our assignments in there. It has the quizzes, uh, or the information from the quizzes in there. It is super important that you get it. And we're not covering all of the chapters. We are covering chapter one, two, three, four, five, seven, which is fast shell, and eleven, compression system backup and software installation. The other chapters have more to deal with more to do with server administration. So those have more to do with Linux 2. We're doing server deployment in Linux 2. You're um, managing X windows, Linux processes, administrative tasks, network configurations. You're doing more networking of servers and server related things. More like NOSs, network operating systems compared to OS's, which is what we'll work with in this. Um, so you have to get the textbook. It's a good book, um, and it has software in there. If you don't have the software, that's okay. We'll use, next week, we'll use a thumb drive to pass around the software that's in the book. Um, but you'll need to get the book. This is just an estimated price, 205 It'll be cheaper for you, depending on where you get it. Uh, the other thing that you have to get is Transcender. The first Transcender assignment is in Unit 2. Transcender is available at the bookstore for $50.50. And if you were to go to Transcender's website, it's a couple hundred dollars. So don't go there directly. Go to the bookstore. Transcender is, here's my Transcender account. Let me see. Transcender is a test, um, a testing software that uses, um, that's used in the industry to prepare people for certifications. So you'll notice I had a bunch of different ones. I have A+, I have Windows Server, there's, um, there's even Cisco things, there's Network Plus. Um, and there's a transcender for our certification test that we're working towards, LX0103. Um, and then there's one for LX0104, which is Linux 2. So we, um, let's look at this product. You need to buy this one, LX0103. That's the transcender you need. It's in our bookstore for $50. When you go to the bookstore, um, it, they will ask for your email address, you pay for the product, they will email you a code, it's an X voucher code. X voucher and Transcender are the same thing. X voucher is the, the program that um, you, you use to redeem certification um, vouchers and testing products. So X Voucher Transcender, we use those terms interchangeably. Once you have it and you can, um, once you have your code, then you can register through X Voucher. It, it, they'll send you an email with all the instructions and directions. It's pretty easy. And then you can go in, you know, you activate your software. When you activate it, you have six months. You don't want to activate it until you're ready to use it because um, you want all of that time you have, you know, every day to practice and study for your certification. Um, Linux Plus. So, so in here, this is a really great piece of software. Um, it's helped so many of our students this last year. We've been using it one year now, and we use it for a whole bunch of different courses. But it's helped so many of our students pass their certifications. Um, if you want to get certified, Transcender is going gonna, is gonna to help you get certified. So that's why we require it. And then we um, take our final exam from here. We have um, a lot of different assignments from here. Uh, so it, what it is, is it's a test prep software. 
So if I want to do, let's say, I want to look at all of the system architecture questions, I would do that. Um, and then, it, you know, you answer the questions, you can grade it, you can see um, explanations and so on. When we do our first assignment, we'll go through Transcender some more together, but you need to purchase that. So that's Transcender. So we have the textbook that you can rent for way cheaper than $200, um, or you can buy used for cheaper than $200. Uh, and then we have Transcender. Everything else, you're going to get for free. That's not much of a consolation prize because I know um, book textbooks are expensive. I do have um, two copies that we can use in the classroom. So if you can absolutely not get a copy, um, we can use you can use one in class, but uh, you won't have anything to take home with you. So. I'll bring my two copies every week. We're going to use VM Player or VM Workstation, um, whatever's installed on, on the computers in there. Um, we'll use Fedora, and we're going to use Fedora 20. That's what comes with this textbook. Um, we'll talk about that next week. So uh, you can download it for free if you don't have the CD, or we'll pass it around. Um, that's the version of Linux that, or the Linux distribution that we're going to use. Uh, and then we'll use Putty, which is free as well. Um, there'll be other things that we'll use as part of Linux, but it's, it'll all be free. So get the textbook and get Transcender very, very soon. Uh, more links down here. So I'm still in required materials, but it, it talks about, you know, what what all this stuff is. Um, on the Hub, this is a free thing that you can get as part of um, a student in our department, and it gives you access to free Microsoft software, like um, VM Workstation. And Well, that's not Microsoft, but it has VM Workstation in there, and then it has a, a bunch of other products that you can get for free. So there's a video and a um, link on how to access it. While you're a student, you want to access that because there's a lot of good stuff in there. We'll talk more about the vouchers for the certification later. Uh, kind of along the same lines of free stuff, Office 365 if you go to our department website, you can get Office 365 for free. So if you go to grcc.edu slash CIF, it'll redirect you to our website. And over here on the right, you will see free Office 365. This is how you can get um, free Word, Excel, Access, PowerPoint, the full product for free. So check that out. Um, the other stuff that I was talking about, DreamSpark, that is, there's a DreamSpark plugin. It's called On the Hub. And within the first week or two of classes, you'll get a link to that so that you can sign up for that as well. And that's pretty, a pretty good deal. Is that the, this is the point of the class where I go, are you guys getting tired yet? You want to take a break? So however you want to do that, you can pause at any time. We don't want to talk too much longer, but we want to cover let's see, uh, the rest of this layout. Um, a Transcender X voucher information. Here is a, a link of certifications. When we do our first Transcender software, um, transcender um, assignment. I'll talk about this in class, but this, if you want to work ahead um, or do something once you get your um, software product or your software email, your transcender email, this tells you everything about it. So how to, how to connect to it, how to use it to pass your certification, what it is, um, technical support, X for X voucher and transcender. And then this is certification information. 
where to get your voucher, where to take your test, what are the objectives. Again, we'll cover that um, when we do our first assignment. Resources, this is a link that is in a working directory, meaning we'll add things to it. So a ton of great stuff in here. Um, this is that Office 365 thing, awesome free stuff. Um, on the Hub, that's awesome free stuff you might want. Not required, but cool things for the course. Ooh, I have that in the weird place. Um, Fedora Management Guide, we're using Fedora, so that's kind of useful. Um, how to use Putty to connect the Raider shell. Key terms, DistroWatch, VI Cheat Sheets, just a bunch of different links that I've found over the years that will help you succeed in Linux. So check out that resource, a resource link um, frequently whenever you're stuck. Okay, the rest of these links here um, are pretty standard. Blackboard calendar, um, email me directly, um, instant messenger, here's the CompTIA website for the certification. Uh, open, we, we do have tutors who are helpful in Linux if you need help and accessibility IT help in the library link. So that is how things are laid out for this course. So what do I want? I have all these links open because I want to talk about every single one of them. See all those? Holy moly. Um, but you're probably tired of listening to me because I'm not even there. And you're like, she's going on forever. Um, take some time. I'll end here in a minute. I'm going to flip through those links real quick because I just there's some cool stuff out there. But uh, when you're done, done listening to this, um, before you leave, go to the assignments tab, go through unit zero. In here, there is the discussion board I mentioned. There's a quiz. It's not hard at all. You can take that right now and pass it. Please take it. Very easy. And then there's an extra credit course tour quiz. And that is the quiz that will disappear after the deadline. So you so the deadline is September the September seventh, the first week, the first deadline. Make sure you go in and take that extra credit quiz because we don't have too much extra credit. And it again is super easy. You'll pass that and get all the extra credit points. So go to unit zero. Um what this is an introduction preparing for the course. So I give you a, you know, everything that I just talked about is in here, but in written format. Um, the discussion board, the first quiz, um, how to succeed in an online class. This isn't an online class, but I do everything. I also put everything out in Blackboard. So it doesn't matter if it's face to face or online. I use Blackboard heavily and equally in all of my courses, so you must be comfortable with the environment. If Blackboard is completely new to you, then this link right here will show you what to do with that. Okay, this folder tour of the course, that's where that secret extra credit is. It's not really secret. I'm telling you about it, and it's not really hidden because it's right in there, but um, Take a tour of the course, so go through all that the stuff here and find the extra credit. Scrolling, scrolling. Sorry, it's not this one. But read through all that. Um, and then, again, make sure you just do all of these things that are in Unit 0, and you can be done for today. Um, three things in there that are graded. Once you submit them and I grade them, check your grade sheet. And then I'll see you guys next week. I'm not done talking yet, so don't get excited. But I'll see you guys next week, and we'll do chapters one and two together. What will be helpful for next week? Obviously, get your book before then. Get Transcender if you can. And um, read chapters one, because we're going to go through one very quickly. And two is more hands-on, so read chapter one. Um, a couple things I think is really cool. Uh, what is Linux? I'll post this video out there um, in in that uh, 
maybe in chapter one folder. What is Linux? It's just a quick five minute video. I watched it. It wasn't bad except the end when he does a whole um, advertisement for Dollar Shave Club. But uh, it gives you an overview of what this class or what this operating system is and it's an NOS as well, but what is Linux and how it's used. So that's a cool video. Um, list of Linux adopters, holy moly, um, everybody. You, you might not think it's used very, it, that it's very popular, but um, this is listed by country. Uh, here's some of the businesses. Let's just take a look at some of the businesses that are using Linux. Uh, let's see, Amazon.com, heard of them, yeah. Google, their entire platform is used in a version of Ubuntu that they call Ubuntu. Why is that funny? Um, IBM, Wikipedia, that we're, I'm on a Wikipedia right now. That's all um, Linux-based. Um, DreamWorks, Animation, Electrolux. Those smart um, appliances, you know, do you see those Kelly Ripa commercials? Those are all Linux-based. Uh, Microsoft even uses Linux. Isn't that funny? But they do. Um, just uh, NASA uses it. Um, the, the United States Navy uses it on Linux. Uh, the government websites are built on Linux. So many things are running um, on a Linux platform. A lot of your gaming things are on um, Linux. Steam is a Linux platform now. And so um, over 100, I think it's at over 100, maybe it's at over 1,000. Um, I, I don't game, but I have a 12-year-old son. And Steam, you know, that's where his allowance money goes to. And uh, you know what I'm talking about. I know you do. But uh, maybe it said over a thousand um, Steam games were now Linux compatible. So you can run that operating system, a Linux operating system for free, and you don't have any problems with Steam. So everyone uses Linux. It's, it's something that you need to know going, here it is, Bell, right here. Um, it's something that you need to know going uh, into the field of IT. Uh, let's see, here's another good website. 30 big companies that use Linux. I'll make a link to all these so you can check them out and more. Google, Twitter, Facebook, Amazon, IBM, McDonald's. Hmm. I didn't know that. The um, submarines. The U.S. Navy is controlled by a Linux platform. This is really cool. Lockheed Martin. Have you ever heard of them? They are the... Um, company that provides the platforms for uh, our U.S. military and our naval, uh, our naval, our naval submarines. Um, they are built, they build their systems on Linux platforms. Very cool. Good company to work for. Make some money. Um, Watches, mobile devices, your Android-based phone was was um, Linux-based. Uh, OSs. Uh, one other cool thing: um, trains. The high-speed Japanese train is Linux-based. Um, your vehicles now. This 2017 XTS sedan. That's a nice Cadillac. Um, that has a voice-integrated system where you can do things like. I want an ice cream cone, and it will tell me where the ice cream place is, and that's all on a Linux platform. Uh, this motorcycle here, Mavizen, Mavizen, I don't know, electric super bike, this has a Linux platform built into it. It's a motorcycle, you guys. Linux. What? It's true. It works. Um, you know, it's, it's everywhere. Oh, there's a couple examples. I think that's all. Oh, here's another really good site. You're a newbie. There's a guide for you. LinuxNewbieGuide.org. Right here. LinuxNewbieGuide.org.
org. I'll put a link out to it. Um, there's a whole book on basics, where, which will help you with what we're doing. So the um, consulting, a um, bunch of tutorials out there. That's a cool um, guide to know. And then the last one I want you to look at, DistroWatch. Um, Linux has hundreds of distributions. Here's the top 100 right here. Over here on the left, or on the right, excuse me, you'll see the distribution. Let's just scroll over or zoom in. Um, Mint in the last, that's the last six months. But Mint is the highest ranked distribution right now. Ubuntu is number three. Fedora is number six. There's so many things that you may have heard of, so many different platforms, and they're growing in popularity or losing um, in popularity rates. But you'll learn many different pl um, platforms or distributions over your, your education with Linux. Um, once you learn one, it's easy to go to another. So even though we're learning Fedora in this class, we're going to do a lot of command line things that are similar on every Linux distribution. So we'll talk a little bit about that with next week's stuff as well. So that's it. Um, thank you for listening. It was nice to um, virtually meet you all, or at least um, I feel like it was nice to do an introduction for you guys so I know what you know, even though I'm not there and I'm sitting in the hospital right this minute. But I will be back. Uh, very soon, and I will see you next week um, in, in class. Again, get the book, get Transcender, read Chapter 1, and do Unit 0. Read Chapter 2, too, if you have extra time. So, um, thank you. I'll see you guys later.